symptom. Here is, first of all, I'm going to look at my doctor's orders. Change pick dressing in caps November 28th, which is today. A1C on admission, blood glucose twice daily, daily CBC, NSF 1 gram, IV Q6H. So I'm going to look and see what time I have to give that NSF at. And I have to give it at 2 o'clock, which is within the hour. <laughs> so I'm going to prepare that right now. And then I'm going to my labs. I know this A1C is 12, which is quite high. It should be between 4.5 and 6. Um, his blood glucose is 9. Again, that's quite high. It should be between 4 and 8. Um, I know that his he has diabetes, and I know that his diabetes impacts um, healing time, and I know that he's more likely to get infections, which is kind of what leads me to believe he's on the ANSAF for. Um, and then from his CBC count, it was his white blood cells and neutrophils are both normal. So that is good. That means the ANSAF starting to work. Good thing. All right. So now I'm going to go into my patient's room. Hi, my name is Taylor. I'm going to be your student nurse today. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm not bad. Thanks for asking. Um, what's your name? Joel Nicholson. Okay, Joel. Um, so today I'm going to be giving you, or sorry, I'm going to be changing your pick dressing. I'm going to be changing the caps, and I'm also going to be giving you a medication called ANSEF. Have you had this medication before? Yes. Yes. Yeah, you're right. So you all, you've been uh, taking this medication for the last two weeks to uh, get rid of this infection you have. Um, so I'm just going to do a quick assessment of your pig site. So I, I'm looking at the pig dressing. I'm looking for any redness or swelling, which I don't see. I, don't, I also don't see any exudate, which is also a good thing. Uh, I notice it's a double lumen. I know it's a closed system, so I know that I'll flush with normal saline and not heparin. Uh, usually we give medications in the distal port, um, but I will check in the chart just to make sure to see um, what, what port they've been using to administer medications. Um, all right. So, ha do you have any have for the ANSEF? Have you had any reactions to the ANSEF? No. Nope. Any side effects? No. Nope. Okay, that's good. How's your pain doing today? Very good. Don't don't have any pain. Okay, that's good. Good. So no pain with uh, the procedure either. Um, I'm sure you've had this done before. Um, yep. And do you have any allergies? No. Nope. No, no allergies to any any medications, especially things like penicillin. No. Nope. No. Okay. That's really good. All right. So I'm going to get started. I'll be back in a couple minutes, okay? Okay. Okay. So I'm going to go into my bedroom. I'm going to wash my hands. I'm going to pull up my um, NSF drug monograph. I'm looking for if I can give it direct IV, which I can. Um, max concentration, 100 milligrams per mil. So I know that I'll have to for a 1 gram, which is in his MAR dilute it to at least 10 milliliters. Um, it says to give over 3 to 5 minutes. Um, I'm just going to check my compatibility IV. So again, 1 gram vial. Um, I'm adding 9.6 mils of sterile water. And it also is compatible with normal saline. So I'm going to use normal saline. Um, Alright. So I also would have done checked in my drug guide. So I pulled it up. It's a bacteriocereal uh, medication. Again, reconstitute one gram with at least 10 mils of sterile water or normal saline, which I'm going to be doing. IV push, over, administer over three to five minutes, and it's stable for 24 hours at room temperature, so I can I can leave it out for 24 hours. Um, the max dose, tw uh, 250 milligrams to two grams Q6H, so again, we're giving one gram Q6H. Um, I'm aware of the side effects, so uh, discomfort at the uh, IV site, um, mild diarrhea, mild, mild abdominal cramping, um, nausea, and beware of that allergic reaction. All right. So then I'm going to take my drug out of my um, out of the drug machine, <laughs> and I'm going to start by taking off my caps. I have looked at the expiry dates on both and I've checked the medication again, uh, name twice, ANSEF and one gram, and again normal saline. All right, so then I'm going to open up. Or sorry, I'm going to sterilize the tops. All right, and I'm going to grab a blood fill. This all would have been uh, new materials. I would have taken this out of a package. That would have been sterile. So would this. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is 
and withdraw 9.6 mils of air out of my ANSEF because I'm reconstituting it. And then I'm going to put this air into my normal saline. And then I'm going to withdraw 9.6 mils. And then I'm going to place this medication in, or sorry, at the normal saline in the ANSEF. And I'm looking for any clumps. So actually, and it wouldn't actually be this pressurized, because <laughs> it would be a brand new bottle. <laughs> so. so I'm looking, making sure there's no clumps. I wouldn't have actually withdrawn the needle. The only reason I did that is because it was so pressurized that I couldn't actually control the needle. So I'm pulling back my ass. And stuff. And still, it's quite pressurized, so that's okay. So make sure I get my full ten. Go up to my ten to remove the air. Good. And then put this back on. All right. So then I would throw these away. I create my uh, my uh, medication label, and I would put this on my syringe. But I'm going to just keep that, put, pretend I put that on. Okay, so I pulled my drug. Now I'm going to bring all my supplies to my room. Good, how are you? I'm not bad. Okay, so um, before I do anything, I'm going to check um, your name. So could you tell me your name? Joel Nicholson. And when's your birthday? May 30th, 1940. Okay, so again, I've checked my um, my MAR to my patient, two patient identifiers. I just want to confirm you don't have any allergies. No allergies, no. Nope. Okay, that's good. Awesome. All right. I would pull these drapes for privacy. Alright. Hi, are you, how are you doing? Are you comfortable like that? Yep. Sterile field first. Make all of my belongings. There are a lot of them. So I can touch the one inch um, border around the dressing tray and I can touch the outside. All right. So I'm gonna extend my my um, sterile field. Yeah, I can touch that one inch border. I'm gonna put that right under my patient. Okay. And now I'm going to ex put everything into my sterile field 
so that I um, don't have to do it later. So these would be new packages. I would check the expiry dates on everything I'm using. And that would have a cap on it so it wouldn't actually spray across the room like it's or spray across the trail field like it just did. Yes, I do. How often do you check your blood glucose levels? Um, not often. How would you say, how often do you check it in a month? Um, maybe ten times a month. Okay, that's not too bad. So, um, you know that, um, your infection may be caused by your uncontrolled blood glucose levels, which is which are quite high. Maybe. Okay. Who knows? So I might actually get you to maybe chat with um, one of our diabetes nurses. She uh, she can maybe help you out with some information. Sure, that sounds good. Yeah. Prevent these infections from happening. Yeah, kind of sucks. Yeah. So how, um, you been doing okay with these antibiotics? Yeah, they're okay. Yeah, have you had any, um, side effects? Any nausea um, or vomiting and abdominal pains, anything like that? Um, not really. Okay, and then this is wet, and I know that that would compromise my shelf field, so in real life I would, um, take out my sterile seals and get a new one. are a lot of things to put into this trail field. There's a lot of garbage. So I'm going to do two um, dressings because I noticed that that one on there is small and I know that um, the dressing needs to cover the entire um, plate. Alright, so I've got my sterile field set up. So the first thing I'm going to do is take off my old site, old dressing, sorry, with clean gloves. So I know that if it's n too sticky, then I'm going to be using alcohol swabs to help take off my dressing. So I'm pulling towards the insertion site and making sure not to move that catheter around too much. Okay. How you doing? Good. Does that hurt at all? No. Nope. Okay, good. Feeling good. Now, I'm going to take off my clean gloves, and I'd use hand sanitizer, but I don't have that right here, so I just pretend. Hand sanitizer. I'm going to put on my gel gloves.
Alright. My towel is drawn. And now I'm going to take off my Steri strips. So I can touch this plate. Because my straw gloves are on. And go in the garbage. And then I'm going to take off my stat lock. I know I can use alcohol swabs if it um, is sticking too much to the patient. And this is a mannequin, so I know that it's much more sticky than how it would be in real life. You won't hurt me. Sorry. Just yank it off. <laughs> Alright, so I've taken off the old stat lock. So I still have my sterile gloves. I haven't touched anything that's non-sterile. So I'm going to take my chlorhexidine scrubs. Uh, so they're 2% chlorhexidine, 70% alcohol. And I'm going to use multi-directional scrubbing for a minimum of 30 seconds. And I'm vigorously scrubbing. I'm scrubbing everywhere that the dressing might touch the skin. And I'm also going to scrub along the catheter, multi-directional again. Alright. So I allow that to air dry for a bit of 30 seconds, but um, it's a mannequin, so it's probably not going to dry. Alright, so then I'm going to look for my stat lock um, skin prep. So I'm going to take that off and I'm going to prep it where I'm going to put my, my uh, stat lock. And then I'm going to um, put on, secure my catheter site with Steri strips. These are new stat locks, even from what we had in Sim on the Thursday. How are you doing? I'm good. You're doing a great job. You're <laughs> such a good nurse. <laughs> Okay, so I need to make sure the whole IV site is covered. Paying careful attention not to touch my... patient. So I noticed that it's not covering his whole site, so I know I'm going to have to put another one on. So that's why I grabbed two. So 
So I'm trying to make this as smooth as possible. Oh, this is annoying. It's a little challenging. I'm just going to smooth that down. So I've got the whole IV site covered, including the stat lock. Alright, so I'd also take a pen afterwards and write my name and the date and the time I changed it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is change the caps. So I'm going to take my normal saline, take off my syringe or cap. I'm going to No, it doesn't fit onto it. Put it on the other side. Okay. Ah! There we go. <laughs> it does fit. Okay. So I'm going to pry my cap with normal saline. And I'm going to pry my other cap with normal saline. are now primed with normal saline. I'm going to take my alcohol swabs in here and I'm going to clean for 30 seconds um, make sure with 70% alcohol to make sure that there's less risk of infection. Alright. So I'm going to come in here I'm going to do my uh, distal port first. So I'm going to take off my old port. Put on my new port. So I'm going to aspirate for blood return. Don't see any blood return. I'm going to use the turbulent flushing method. How's that? Any pain? Nope, not at all. Okay, so I'm looking at this site again, looking for redness or swelling. And I'm check seeing the resistance of the flush. All of that. So I did my flush there. It's a good sound. Alright. So then I'm going to do my med. So I know that this is my cephalopin. I'm gonna administer over three to five minutes. So normally I would look at my watch, three minutes. I'd give it, but for the sake of time, I'm just going to administer quickly again using that turbulent flushing method, looking for the ease of the drug to go into the port. Okay. And then I'm going to and I'm going to flush the med with normal saline. Then I give this a little bit slower than um, just because I know that if I were to push this really quickly, the med in the line could go in very quickly. So I don't want that to happen. So I do a little bit slower than usual. I'm using normal saline again because they're a closed system. And then my last change is my other cap. So I'm going to take it off. So this again, this is primed with normal saline. Making sure not to touch any of the caps to maintain sterility. And again, I'm doing my turbulent flushing. Oh, sorry. Before I would push, I would then I would first aspirate and then I would push um, to see the blood return. And if there was any blood return, I wouldn't have done the flush. Okay, so I do my nine to ten, or sorry, my ten mils of normal saline, and we're good. So I've changed the caps, I've administered the med, 
done my dressing change. All right. So this is all going to go in the garbage. So after I'm done this, I would um, do some documentation. So I'd do the date and the time. I'd talk about the um, the pick site. So I'd talk about if there's any redness or swelling or erythema. Um, I'd also talk about the ease of the flush, um, how there was no blood when I aspirated. Um, I'd talk about how the patient tolerated the med, any concerns I might have. I'm going to toss all of the stuff in the garbage. And I think that's all fine. Close my curtains, tidy up, um, like I said, document. I'd probably return and check on the patient to make sure that um, he wasn't having any side effects or any pain. Alright, that's all.